This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care if you haven't seen the movie you see and you're afraid of spoilers, you know. There's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about that movie, about about this one. Okay, let us begin. Oppenheimer. Written and directed by Christopher Nolan is Oppenheimer. It, you've seen it. It's got a million things to list off here, so we'll save you some time. It's got a runtime of three hours, uh, 93 on Rotten Tomatoes. What is it? A 91 audience score. It is the heavy favorite to win Best Picture at the Oscars. It is nominated for a total of 13 Academy Awards. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Killian Murphy, Best Supporting Actor, Robert Downey Jr., Best Supporting Actress, Emily Blunt, and Best Sound. Uh, this is maybe just a cut below being one of the all-time greats, but you you tell me. I think it's in there. I like think it's all time of, great. Watch. It is a classic movie, an instant classic. Uh, not not much bad things to say about this movie. This movie is a hua, <laughs> very close to being a masterpiece. If it's not a masterpiece, we've got a full episode on this, by the way, from uh, when we initially saw it. Uh, you could check that out somewhere on YouTube. Uh, minus twenty five hundred betting odds, and that sounds about right. This mm-hmm. just ain't the year for who's gonna win discussion this is a very heavy favorite should be a very heavy favorite and i think would be in most years like parasite doesn't beat this and like the thing like shape of water i don't know if this will be out at the same time or before or after there's a comp that i make with shape of water and poor things and this and dunkirk and everything like i'm thinking of best like past best picture winners they're they're not beating this and there are a lot of movies i love this year and they're not beating this. Yeah, so uh, there, there's two things that it has going for it. And, well, there's a lot of things it has going for it. But, like, two real big uh, heavy heavy punches here. Number one, it's like a cinematic masterpiece. But enough <laughs> about the breasts. <laughs> there's a cinematic masterpiece. Uh, and number two, it was a pop culture event. And I know half of that is due in, in part to Barbie. And don't want to take that away from Barbie. But, like, Barbenheimer was a real pop culture moment in time and i think that you have to give it credit for that for how many people it got to the theaters as part of this experience yeah i mean going into this i think i saw the yeah i saw this after barbie same but i went into each with a here we go all right wow me and granted even though for barbie i remember i was at like a professional screening Yet everybody still was like, fuck that. We're wearing <laughs> cool party. shit. And like, yeah. They were partying and like throwing shit at the screen. They were drunk. There was fucking strippers everywhere. <laughs> like it was just out of control. Uh, this I saw with mortals and still was just like, all right. Like there's a buzz. Here we go. Like it was all palpable. And what a picture. Didn't feel too long. I remember we both said at the same time that like they Barbie and Oppenheimer, despite one being way longer than the other, but this is what exactly three hours. Mm -hmm. This felt exactly the same length as Barbie. (laughs) Yeah. Like you don't want to miss a second of this. And there's so much great going for it. Like the explosion done justice. Everything looks amazing. But mainly, I remember gushing about this at the time. You leave your theater holding your chest at these performances. Mod own, like kill Killian Murphy is so great he's gonna win best actor but you're like he could not be in this movie there could be no j robert oppenheimer character or actor in this movie and you'd still be like robert downey jr my god crumholtz what do you do <laughs> matt damon did you just possibly give the best performance of your career in this movie like i don't even fucking care about casey affleck in this movie rami malek is good what incredible movie even emily blunt i'm willing to go out on a brave stance and say that killian murphy as oppenheimer was very important to the movie oppenheimer yeah but you're like i don't need (laughs) fuck oppenheimer for a second (laughs) um yeah this is another one of those movies that i would classify in like the has no business being this good kind of thing because it's three hours long. It's a historical biographical movie about a fucking scientist or a physicist or whatever he fucking was. I don't care. It's not important. We will never learn about <laughs> J. Robert Oppenheimer. Nice try, fucking dorks. We're not doing it. <laughs> so, like, it's so, it's so much dialogue, so dialogue heavy. But, boy, to do that 
and to tell this story and to never have it feel like it's going too slow or like there's too much sitting around talking. I, I forget who I, was it. Somebody had some dumb celebrity who had like a oh, all they're doing is talking in this movie. It, yeah, it's a fucking idiot. And when they're talking. It's fucking it's Harry Truman calling J. Robert Oppenheimer a baby back bitch. It's incredible. This movie is it's so Einstein good. It's Einstein talking your fucking ear off. Oh, it, it's so good. Uh, it's so good that I honestly didn't see a lot of like annoying horniness about Florence Pugh no. being naked in this movie. And if you were to tell me with how horny film Twitter can be and how Florence Pugh is the apple of so many a film viewer's eye that we could be adults about Florence Pugh being naked a whole bunch. You're like, wow, there must have been a whole lot of stuff in this movie that kept you honest. I wonder how much I wonder how much of that was because she RIP'd in tragic fashion. The character like the character. Uh, so maybe people felt disrespectful being horned up for uh for Florence Pugh as a result of the way that 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 character arc de devolved. I don't know if there's much that could stop people from like the, the, the horny types. And I could mention some by name, <laughs> like some are even friends, Bob Goochman, Bob Goochman, <laughs> who, who would see this and be like, post a bunch of hilarious gifts. Yes. But like, I, uh, I think that, but we could look up Bob. his tweets. I'm pretty sure Bob kept it in his pants about this. I hope so. Yeah. Like, I think he was respect. Like, Florence Q Pew is in like this uh, group of like Dua Lipa, whatever, yeah. like but Sydney Sweeney. Every time they do anything, people are like, this is me passing away. But Bob Goochman is passionate about two things. He's passionate about the cinema and passionate about naked women. And the cinema, the cinema won came out. first. Yeah. yeah. Cinema came first. This that's how that's it speaks to how good this movie is. Cinema won out over Florence Pugh's naked body. What amazing ricochet. Like not we fucking exploded an atomic bomb oh, on Goochman for some reason. That's right. In this movie. Yeah. Uh the, the explosion was good by the way. You a thing that I meant to say in the beginning if I didn't as like the synopsis like you've seen Oppenheimer. Like no one who's hearing this yeah. hasn't seen Oppenheimer. So like we don't even need to talk about the explosion and shit like that. We can just talk about our favorite parts. Yes. Uh just the the character study is is so good. Um performances off off the charts, cinematography off the charts and we haven't talked about it, but Lug Ludwig Göransson crushes the score. I went back and listened to our review of it. I was very proud. The first thing we talked about in our main review is Ludwig Göransson's score, which is so critical to keeping you gripped to this entire movie. Every piece of dialogue. So like I reject the, they're just sitting around like everything you hear and see is attached to like a lot of like droning kind of pedal notey things. Very Johnny Greenwood. There will be blood, which is like, for my money and a lot of people's money, like an iconic score. This is as important a piece to this movie as anything else. Like Ludwig Gordson is as important to this movie as John, as uh, like Killian Murphy is. And I'm not kidding. I think that that's fair. Like, I, I think that both of those performances are as, as high as you can get on the scale. Like a 100 out of 100 for both of them. So I'm not going to say that he's less important. I think we, uh, I don't even remember if we brought this up with uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, but like Robbie Robertson gets this year's great job. You ain't going to win, buddy. Yeah, I think Awards. you did mention that like, in, in our. He's got Killers the second best betting yeah. odds, but might as well be the 900th best betting odds. You may Nobody as well not is, nominate anybody else. Nobody should touch. Like the, I think the angriest I could be would be. If John, if uh, I keep calling him Johnny Greenwood, which is a great compliment, if Ludwig Gordson in his score don't win, I'd be more There's upset. There's no chance if that lost than if Oppenheimer lost Best Picture. I mean, if it, that has to be like the the steepest odds, right, of any category. Let's pull. Or it I, up. I guess maybe uh, I could see no the best like, foreign film. Uh, or best international film. Apologies, mm. uh, best international film. Like there is a clear winner there because it's the one international film nominated for best picture best original score Oppenheimer minus 2000 wow. killers of the flower moon plus 1000 and I know like for sports minus 2000 
sounds just don't even touch crazy. it. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but for movies, like if the favorite's only minus two thousand, you're like, ooh. Somebody sneaking in. Yeah, the that's, that's pretty close. <laughs> uh, maybe I should yeah. I can get, get that's some good odds. But uh, what's uh what's the zone of interest uh odds for uh best international film? Let me see. Uh best anime film editing. It's, it's gotta be steeper than that, right? Uh, best uh, international feature zone of interest is minus twenty five hundred. Okay. Let yeah. me find. Let me see if I can find a category that is just so like what do we? Oh, this movie, best supporting actor Robert Downey Jr. is minus thirty five hundred. Jesus, <laughs> go off, King. <laughs> That fantastic, w- correct. Yeah, I mean, he was so good in this, but that that's a bit surprising to me that that is the one that is like the steepest, rather than the one international movie that's nominated for best picture. Second straight year in which best supporting actor was probably the biggest shoe in. Right? What was last year? Uh, last year was uh, uh, why can't I think of uh. Last year was uh, I can't think of the name. Of, oh, Kiwi Kwan for oh, yeah. uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, I was like everything in its right place. Everything. Yeah, Kiwi Kwan last year. Remember, was like the ultimate. Just don't fucking touch that category. <laughs> yep. uh, but well deserved for Robert Downey Jr. And again, we saw this like everybody did the day it came out or the day before it came out or whatever. So opening weekend, none of us yeah. knew that. Like we all actually for ourselves saw oh my god robert downey jr is so incredible in this and like that hadn't been given to us yet and we all came away blown away uh from by so many of these performances yeah um i I don't know if we want to get into pros and cons Yeah, let's go pros and cons uh pros just a three-hour runtime that did not feel three hours because of the pacing incredibly impressive especially for a movie that's a historical biography and just like a dialogue heavy character study that is insanely impressive the score obviously the cinematography obviously the performances obviously and i have nothing for cons so nothing that i say for positives is going to be so different from what you just said so all that is right and i agree with everything you said uh for cons this isn't a con it can be a con if you fucking suck uh Einstein is not a serious character. <laughs> that is a massive pro for me. I loved that every like five minutes, it was like uh, how like Batman kept showing up in the Batman around the uh, police station and the cops would like walk into the station. They'd be like, oh, hey, Batman. Like I loved <laughs> that Einstein kept fucking being there. Uh, Hi, the- Einstein. Hi, Albert Einstein. Einstein was ridiculous, <laughs> but uh, it did lead to incredible memes and for Oppenheimer to be one of the most perfect movies of all time and also and also meme bait is incredible what what a picture what a picture indeed letterboxd obviously five i'm gonna order five. for the for the gentleman five <laughs> yes. both of us have five you it's it this movie is such an obvious five that in our full review you gave it a 10 out of five really by accident and then you said oh stupid five out of five i'm sorry you said 10 for the table hey if i could vote for oppenheimer twice i would five it, out of five. five out of five it's going to win best picture and it is absolutely going to deserve it so mm. what a cinema so don't watch any other movies